Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to get rid of ringworm. Before I do that, make sure you're subscribed if you like getting skincare content from a board certified dermatologist and hit that little bell icon. That way YouTube lets you know as soon as my videos go live. No worms are involved in ringworm. It's actually caused by a fungus. It can happen anywhere, truthfully. The scalp, the hands, the feet, the body, the nails, the groin area. Ringworm is one common name. Jock itch when it's in the groin area athlete's foot when it involves the feet. Treatment is essential. Without treatment, it will not go away. And it can spread and it can actually involve, start to involve the hair follicle, get down deep in the skin and cause an abscess. Ringworm is also contagious. You can spread it from person to person and you can get ringworm from your pets. New kittens and puppies, guinea pigs, farm animals. It's often ring shaped. Not always, but it often is. It's a ring that has a raised edge that's very often very scaly, very flaky. Paler skin types, it's light pink or red. And deeper skin types, that's gonna appear sort of brownish gray. It grows pretty slowly and spreads outward. And importantly, it's very itchy. Ringworm is one of those skin conditions where you will never be at fault as a dermatologist for testing for it because it can look like so many skin conditions. Aside from the classic ring shape, it can look a little different. Like on the feet, it's not typically gonna have that ring shape. It often will start between the toes, spread out to involve the bottoms of the feet. It can involve the toenails and it can later potentially be transferred to your hands involving the fingers, the palms of the hands, red itchy rash with a scaly border. Often you'll see the scale on the sides of the fingers or the sides of the feet. Uh, one or multiple nails. The nails typically become thickened, crumbly, discolored. They have a lot of flaky stuff on, underneath them. As a nail fungus goes on untreated, you can start to lose the nail. It's important to understand the risk factors for getting ringworm because that is a key thing when it comes to getting rid of it. Fungus loves moist and macerated. Maceration, think of it as like breakdown, moist macerated skin, like between the skin folds, when you get skin breakdown from skin on skin rubbing, friction. People at risk for ringworm are those who live in a hot, humid climate, who sweat a lot, people who are active in contact sports, especially wrestling. Again, it's contagious. So you can get it from coming in contact with your opponent, communal living, spending time in a locker room. Locker rooms in particular, if you think about it, they're often humid. People are in there taking showers, walking around barefoot. Definitely a prime location for picking up ringworm. You can get it from sharing towels, clothing, razors. You can get ringworm in your beard, I didn't mention that, but you can get it from shaving. Nail clippers, new pets, puppies, kittens, guinea pigs, contact with farm animals. And of course, if you are immunosuppressed, if you have diabetes, your immune system doesn't fight off infections as well. And people with diabetes, they are more prone to maceration and cracks on their feet. So they're definitely at risk for foot fungus, toenail fungus. People who are overweight or obese are also more inclined to develop ringworm because of skin on skin contact, maceration, a moist environment. How is it diagnosed? See a dermatologist or your primary care doctor, many are very good at picking this up, uh, just based on not only how it looks, but we do a little test in the office. It's actually quite easy to do because ringworm is often very flaky, very scaly. We just take some of that flaky stuff, put it on a microscope slide, drop something called potassium hydroxide on it, put a cover on. The potassium hydroxide helps dissolve up the skin cells. And then we can see the little fungus in there right under a basic microscope. And then you can also swab the area and send it off for a fungal culture. How is it treated? Antifungal medications either those that you apply to the skin or that you take by mouth. For most cases of ringworm on the body, an antifungal ointment can be used. You can buy these actually over the counter. And so using one of those over the counter ones for about two weeks should clear it up. If it doesn't clear it up, then prescription treatments likely will be needed. Prescription antifungal ointments applied to the area twice a day. The fungus will go away in about two to four weeks. Nail fungus, however, the over the counter creams will not do anything to get rid of it. Still helpful to prevent it's spreading, but they're not gonna get rid of it. In the case of the nails, oral medications are needed and nails grow very slowly. So it actually takes a long time to get rid of the nail fungus. It can be very stubborn. If it's involving the hair follicle 
oral antifungals are needed to get down in there and treat it properly. Scalp ringworm is really common in young children and they can be given safely an oral antifungal medicine called griseofulvin. As the antifungal medicine starts to work, the itch will calm down pretty quickly and then the scaly stuff will start to clear up well before the redness. But importantly, when it comes to the treatments, the prescription stuff, or if you're using the over-the-counter stuff, make sure you use it as directed. Finish it in total, do the whole, like use it as long as they tell you. It'll start to look better, feel better soon, but that doesn't necessarily mean that all the fungus is gone. You wanna make sure that you treat it for the right amount of time, take it exactly as indicated to reduce the chances that it spreads somewhere else or that it comes right back. Antifungal shampoos are also a really important piece of treating this, not only for you, but for your family. It helps cut down on the spread and helps reduce the chances that they will develop it. So oftentimes when you go to the dermatologist to have this treated, not only will they prescribe you an antifungal, they often write for an antifungal shampoo that the whole family should be using. Believe it or not, anti-dandruff shampoos can be helpful in this situation as well because fungus really likes uh, that scaly, flaky stuff. It really thrives in that. And a lot of the anti-dandruff shampoos, not only do they help clear that off, they're kind of exfoli they're, they're exfoliants, uh, it just reduces sort of the surface area that that fungus can adhere to, and it helps with the clearance. When we're talking about the feet, y'all know one of my favorite foot ointments is carousel foot ointment. That too can help uh, smooth out that scaly stuff, make it less of a favorable environment for for athlete's foot. Long story short, keratolytics, salicylic acid, urea, they definitely can be very beneficial in helping with the clearance of of that little foot fungus. Really important that you make sure you wash your hands whenever you touch skin that is infected or you know, your scalp, your feet, your nails, because you can easily spread it to other body sites. For example, a lot of people develop ringworm on their feet. They start touching their feet uh, and then it spreads to the hand. It's called two feet, one hand, or then eventually it can involve the other hand. Keep the area clean, dry, and covered to reduce spread to other areas. Here's another tip. If you have athlete's foot, ringworm on your feet, don't use your towel that you used on your, fungus, on your foot fungus to dry off the rest of your body because you'll be spreading it all over the place. So take your foot, the towel you used to dry off your feet, put it in the laundry. Put on the fungal medications to the feet, then put socks on over it. Then wash your hands. Then put your underwear on and get dressed. Because, the, why do it in this way? Like, what, what is all this about? What, what also can end up happening is that uh, people who have foot fungus, if they put their underwear on first, they drag it over their feet, pulling the underwear up, brings the foot fungus up to their crotch. And then you get jock itch to accompany your foot fungus. So put the, do, do like I said, um, when you get out of the shower, make sure you clean, your feet are clean, you towel dry them completely, because again, fungus loves a moist environment. Put that towel in the washing machine, don't use it to dry off the rest of your body. Put the antifungal cream on if you're using a cream, then put your socks on, wash your hands so that you don't contaminate your hands and spread it elsewhere, and then put your underwear on and then get dressed. I know it sounds complicated, but trust me, it makes a huge difference. The other thing is make sure that you are treating all infected areas. And this is why when you see a dermatologist, it's so important that they do a full skin check, a, a good thorough skin exam, because you may have the beginnings of a ringworm infection somewhere else on the body, you don't even realize it. And the last thing you wanna do is treat one site and not the other, because it's contagious. You can spread it to other body sites and to people who you cohabitate with. If you've got it on your feet and your groin, both sites need to be treated at the same time. Because the fungus loves moisture and humidity, it thrives in it, make sure that you are not wearing shoes or socks or clothing that makes you sweat. Make sure you're wearing breathable, comfortable clothing. And make sure your shoes fit well. Poorly fitted shoes is gonna create more maceration. Change your clothes daily. Don't rewear sweaty clothing. Wash your clothing as soon as you take it off. If you go to the gym, make sure you take a shower right away because being sweaty, fungus loves that. 
hanging out in sweaty clothes, that is a recipe for the fungus to thrive. Don't share nail clippers. Why would you wanna give your friend toenail fungus? Don't share socks, don't share washcloths. And if you have children, don't let them take naps together, or sleep in the same bed because they're gonna, they're gonna give it to their sibling. I know I said fungus loves moist and macerated environments, so this may sound counterintuitive, but make sure you're using an, a moisturizer or a ointment to, keep, to act as a skin protectant, to keep the skin hydrated and the barrier function robust. Because those little micro tears, cracks, fissures, that is a portal of entry for fungus. Make sure that you're keeping your feet moisturized to reduce the chances that it spreads the little cracks like around your nail beds, ends up going into your nails, all of that. Keep your nails clipped short. Don't share the nail clippers with people. The longer your nails are, that's just more territory for the fungus to get in. And I also suggest uh, if you have been given a prescription topical antifungal or you're using the stuff over the counter, in the case of uh, foot fungus, make sure you are putting that cream not only to the feet, the bottoms of the feet, make sure you're getting the sides of the feet, make sure you're getting in between the toes, around the nail plate, and under the nail with that cream. Really treat all surface areas, then wash your hands. Wear shower shoes when you're at the pool, in a gym locker, communal setting. If you suspect that you have a pet who is harboring ringworm, take them to the vet. They can be treated, reduce the spread or re-inoculation that way. And last but not least, follow up with your dermatologist because you wanna make sure that the fungus has appropriately cleared. Sometimes these fung uh, fungal organisms, they can end up being resistant to the treatments and therefore another treatment may be needed. So follow up with your dermatologist, make sure that the, that the um, fungus has cleared and make sure that other family members, that they are looking out on their skin and make sure that they're not developing signs and where needed, follow the dermatologist's instructions in case you know, your family members need to be treated with an antifungal shampoo and make sure you're using the treatments as directed. Don't, don't think just because things are getting better that you're done. Make sure you use them for the full course to really ensure that you've gotten rid of it. Make sure that you are washing in hot soapy water, towels, linens, disinfect surfaces in the bathroom. Uh, that tends to be a humid environment where the fungus can kind of linger. All right, y'all, so those are some tips for how to get rid of ringworm. Uh, a lot to cover in this video. I hope it was helpful and I hope you learned something. On the end slate, I'm going to put my video on uh, Tinea versicolor, another little skin fungus that people get. Uh, totally different, different microorganism though. So check that one out if you're interested. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.